We obviously know that COVID and monkeypox are two very different things, but I wanted to ask just what we could kind of learn from looking at our response to COVID-19 and see kind of what tools we can draw from in our response there to respond to the current outbreak of monkeypox. Sure. And, you know, on, on the one hand, I think um, we have been able to apply some lessons learned from COVID-19 response. But on the other hand, I think um, we've only been able to observe some lessons and not really apply some of the things that we should have learned from COVID-19. And I would say the first thing is testing. I think we dropped the ball nationally with, te with testing and just not making it readily available quick enough. You know, it's getting better now, um, but uh, I think, and, and we had the same problem with COVID-19 very early on with some of the stumbles and in, in, in testing. I think we're actually, I think most don't realize we're very lucky, not lucky. Um, we worked very hard over the last 20 years to make sure that we had a, a vaccine available actually for smallpox, because we were worried about smallpox and a potential bioterror attack. And in that, uh, we also, we developed two vaccines against smallpox and one of them uh, that could be used in um, um, immunocompromised uh, people in the population. And that's the vaccine Genios that was is produced by Bavarian Nordic. And now is the vaccine that is being used for monkeypox and to try to uh, control the, the outbreak of monkeypox. So um, I think we can thank some of our investments over the last 20 years in, in public health preparedness that is the reason and rationale we even have a vaccine available today for, for this unusual outbreak that occurred. How do you think the vaccine rollout has been so far for monkeypox? Too slow. Uh, you know, I think one, you know, the good thing is we had, we did have this Genios uh, vaccine available. Uh, we had a limited supply that was already kind of ready to go. What I mean by that is already in vials, still finished and ready to be distributed and disseminated from the CDC national stockpile. Um, but there's quite a bit more and by necessity was stored in bulk that that preserves the the um, um, the shelf life and storage stability of, of the vaccine but it was stored in overseas and in, in, in Copenhagen and so it I think we we're a little bit slow off the mark in um, getting the vaccine um, um, filled and finished in the vials and shipped in the United States we could have done that sooner um, so that's where we're at. <laughs> And tell me a little bit about, uh, you know, I'm sure some people, I don't know, I feel like most people generally accept the science these days of the fact that COVID-19 is very real, uh, the precautions we need to take, etc. Um, do you think that we've made progress in terms of, you know, uh, giving out the correct information and getting people to follow along with precautions? Because I know that was a huge headache with COVID was First of all, just convincing people that this was the right thing to do and this was, you know, um, what the professionals are telling us to do. Do you think we're doing a better job with that this time around? I think we are doing a better job. I think I think um, some public health officials were maybe a little bit slow here too, and and in knowing how to communicate, you know, who is at most at risk, and 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 the community that's that's at most risk. We could have done um, better earlier on. Now I think it's. It's working much better, but we had to, to discuss it in the societal, you know, social context that it is, and and I think you know some um, some felt that uh, they could have had better instructions very early on, so they could take more precautions to protect themselves. But I think now that's happening, and I think I, I think um, the the communities that's highest risk are taking more precautions. We're also rolling out the vaccine. Um, at the right time and and better able to you know uh, identify those who are going to be at most risk and identify those who are have potentially been exposed so they can uh, be you know high priority for receiving the vaccine and we have to make testing easier because earlier on too it was very difficult to get testing you had to sign too many forms and had to go through too many layers and bureaucracy and so forth to, to get tested and I think some of those things are being taken care of now so um, um, people uh, are not so afraid to seek testing and seek uh, care. And talking about the difference between COVID and monkeypox itself, um, when we hear that there's another outbreak, we might get a little PTSD from everything we went through with COVID. Would you mind just kind of breaking down when people hear that the first death has officially been reported here in Texas, um, why that doesn't maybe necessarily mean we need to be the same level of concern we were with COVID, just kind of breaking down the, the differences between the two diseases. 
Well, Sherry, I mean, you know, COVID was, you know, very transmissible as a respiratory virus. And there was so much we did not know about COVID very, you know, early on. You know, it took us a while to really kind of understand who's at most risk and how rapidly it was transmitting in our, in our community. Um, monkeypox, on the other hand, is not a respiratory virus. It, it can transmit that away, but what we're seeing right now is it's primarily uh, over over 90%, almost 95% of the cases are occurring in, in the community with men having sex with men. And so it is right at the moment. That doesn't mean it's going to stay there, though. Um, and because it, it, it could do, it could be on, become more transmissible beyond just that community. And, and, um, uh, but it, it doesn't, it's not rapidly spread by the trans aerosol route that we had with COVID-19. So it's easier to contain it. Um, if people, um, understand, you know, who's at risk and the things that they need to do to protect themselves and seek care, if they do believe they may have been exposed or they are developing symptoms. And it's my understanding that it's not as lethal. Is that correct? It's, it's not, it's not very, it's not a very lethal disease. Now it is related to smallpox, which could be associated up to 30% lethality, but it's not smallpox. It's just, you know, it's in that kind of family of, of viruses and smallpox has been, was eradicated, declared eradicated by the WHO in 1980. But that was one of the, that was one of the um, scourges of humanity actually for um, a long, long time. And you know, thank goodness it's been eradicated. But monkeypox does not have that high a lethality, but it can cause very painful sores. And that kind of leads into my next question for you was just how can people protect themselves against this disease? Yeah, primarily avoid skin to skin contact, uh, avoid, uh, you know, like uh, bedding materials that perhaps could be contaminated. Um, to wash your hands, some of the basics and just infection, you know, disease control, infection, disease control is, a, you know, primary things. And if you believe that you might have been exposed or you, again, you know, experience some, some pustules that look uh, an unusual rash, seek care. Got it. And then last question, this one's a, kind of a little more nuanced, but when it comes to um, the state kind of keeping track of the disease, um, do you think, because I know now we're no longer really depending on COVID-19 tests statewide, just because there's so many at-home tests that aren't being reported, it's no longer really reliable. What do you think going forward, the best way the state can actually keep track of these, uh, you know, outbreaks would be, would that be wastewater sampling? What do we kind of need to consider going forward? Yes, you know, at least at the moment, we don't have home tests for the monkeypox virus. You know, you, you do have to seek care and you have to, you know, see it goes through the public health system. So the our state public health, local public health are going to get all the data. But but one thing that we really need to start doing, not only for monkeypox, for all emerging infectious diseases, I, I think COVID-19 did tell us wastewater surveillance is actually really, really good and a novel. It sounds simple, but it's extremely novel approach to do genomic surveillance of wastewater and and certainly we need to turn the the, the gain up for for that and, and monkey pox and, and other other um, infectious diseases as well so i think we're going to see a lot more about some national strategy straight st state strategies of how we can take advantage and leverage wastewater um, surveillance in the in the future i mean polio was picked up in new york city by by that as an example and that could help too with people that maybe are asymptomatic, so they're not going to get tested. It would help yeah. with underreporting as well. Absolutely. It just gives us much better situational awareness of what the disease background may be in our communities.